Hey everyone, my name is Nick Russo, and in this video, I want to explain my comprehensive study plan to help you pass the security automation exam. This is one of the new specialty DevNet exams offered by Cisco. You can combine it with the security core or score exam to earn your CCMP security, or you can combine it with DevCore, the DevNet core exam, to earn your CC DevP. This is the fourth plan of its kind that I've made, and the overall flow is very similar to the others. I've provided a link to the official website if you want to learn more about the certification itself. This plan is 8 weeks long, with 10 to 12 hours of study time per week. In terms of following the plan, there are two paths you can choose from. The quick start option is for those who already have their DevNet associate or comparable skills, so you don't need to start from the beginning. The square one option is for those who don't have their DevNet associate and they don't have comparable skills, so they do need to start at the beginning. The plan heavily utilizes Pluralsight training, and the reason I chose that is because it is low cost, has an enormous library, and has excellent quality training that is clear and concise. Pluralsight also has a strong developer focus, more so than networking, for example, which makes it perfect for dev-oriented exams like this one. Cisco DevNet itself also has many resources that I've linked in the plan, like learning labs, sandboxes, video training, etc. The total cost to execute this plan is less than $100, US which is the cost of one or two textbooks, so it's really a good value. My content is only a small part of the plan, typically less than a quarter, and this gives you different perspectives from other experts in the field. I've included a link to my website so you can contact me with any suggestions or problems that you have as you make your way through the plan. Before we dive in, I want to talk about this copyright quickly. This plan is free to download and I'd encourage users to use the plan in any way they see fit. You can make edits to it, you can add new resources, you can delete resources, you can add new columns. I encourage all of that. What is expressly not allowed is taking this plan making a couple minor changes, maybe to add your own content and remove mine, and then reposting it. That's called theft, and this copyright prevents that. All that said, let's check out the Quick Start tab. If you already have DevNet Associate or comparable skills, we'll spend two weeks doing some prep work. The first week covers some important software techniques like Python, Git, HTTP, etc. Without these skills, you're not going to be able to do automation of anything, really. During the second week, I ask that you read my free Evolving Technologies book, which is really useful for getting a grasp on some of the new technologies around network automation, cloud, and SDN. Even if you already have your DevNet Associate, I'd recommend investing some time to watch my existing Associate-level courses. These are very popular courses, and they were really fun to create, so I know you'll enjoy it, and it will also help address any skills gaps and provide context around my style of authoring. Next, let's check out the Square One tab. If you are starting from the beginning and are relatively unskilled in these technologies, you'll want to start at the associate level. I want to be clear, you don't have to take the DevNet Associate exam, but you do need the skills within that blueprint. You can access the existing study plan using this link, and you can watch my YouTube video giving context around the plan using this link. This plan is 10 weeks long, and you'll want to put time into it so you can build a strong foundation. Now let's get into the fun part and talk about the security automation plan itself. Week 1 starts off with Day 0 Device Provisioning. This includes technologies like iPixie, Zero Touch Provisioning, and Cisco Plug and Play. Also, any content highlighted in green is my personal content, and you can see at a glance that there is a lot here that isn't mine. Then, we move into network automation using Python-based CLI methods, focusing on NetMeco. My friend and colleague Kirk Byers has many excellent training resources on this specific topic, and you'll definitely want to look at those. It's a combination of Vimeo footage and reading. As a challenge, attempt some ASA automation using NetMeco, which is something we don't do in the course, but would be good for you to learn. Towards the end of the week, I introduce Ansible, which is a popular automation tool worth at least knowing a little bit about. The week finishes with an introduction to telemetry. Those concepts carry over nicely into PX Grid, which we cover later in this plan. Week 2 finishes up network automation by applying Ansible to automate ASAs. I suggest you try to create your own rules as well once I teach you how to do it. 
Then we move into REST APIs using Python scripts for Firepower products. First, we cover FTD, the standalone Firepower instance with a pretty strong API. Then we cover FMC, the centralized manager for FTD instances. The API is a little more complex and has many more features. After each module, I'm challenging you to implement your own firewall policies using both FTD and FMC for practice. Week 3 introduces endpoint security using Cisco AMP. First, there's some product familiarization, followed by automation-specific content. This is a common theme within the plan, because security products all have to fit together a certain way, so you're going to have to understand how the products work before you dive into doing automation. This includes many DevNet Learning Labs, which are guided, step-by-step -step processes that can help you learn about these technologies. The challenges involve utilizing AMP to suit your own needs, like blocking your own application and building your own policies. Then, the plan covers ThreatGrid, which is a malware sandbox or detonation chamber that integrates nicely with AMP. After some product familiarization, I've included videos and labs. If you are brave, you can test real malware with ThreatGrid and then analyze the results, maybe even using your own apps. Week 4 covers Umbrella, the final endpoint security product. Three APIs are in scope, and it's important to understand how they fit together. DevNet offers a handful of labs to explore these different APIs, and you can tell by the time that these are actually pretty long. Although DevNet doesn't have a sandbox, you can use Cisco dCloud because they have an umbrella lab, and it's pretty useful. For each API in scope, I've included a different challenge, and if you're able to do all three, then you're in great shape. Week 5 moves into the final course in the series on security management and visibility solutions. First up is ICE, which has two APIs of interest, ERS and PXGrid. ICE is a complex product with many features, but my course focuses on 802.1x and radius failure logging. The PXGrid sandbox by itself within DevNet is worth exploring on your own, so I linked it here. I found a few useful YouTube videos that I've linked as well. To finish up, I offer two challenges. The first uses ERS to replicate your work environment if you're using ICE in production. You can do things like add network devices, add internal users, and other administrative tasks. The second one uses PXGrid WebSockets to do streaming security telemetry. This is actually very difficult, and I do cover this in detail in my course, but I'd encourage you to try it on your own, maybe using some different subscription topics. Week 6 introduces StealthWatch, which is actually two different products. The first is StealthWatch Enterprise, formerly Landcope, which is an on-premise NetFlow collector and traffic sensor. Then there is StealthWatch Cloud, formerly Observable Networks, which is a SaaS solution that has tight cloud integration. This plan teaches you how to use both in terms of automation and their usefulness within different companies. In terms of challenges, build a small network, maybe in viral or whatever, and create NetFlow rules within it. You can export that traffic to your StealthWatch Enterprise to see how the product works. For StealthWatch Cloud, install a sensor on a VMware ESXi host or a Kubernetes node and watch the intra-app flows, which is very useful. Week 7 covers the last product in the series, which is SMA, short for Security Management Appliance. We use this to manage email and web security appliances, and it provides a simple API to access the security data from those products. First, we have to learn about those products, then we'll move into video training. The challenges are straightforward. Just generate your own customer reports based on the different data you see within the sandbox. The second half of the week is miscellaneous security topics of different technologies. For example, the blueprint doesn't mention Cisco Threat Response, Duo, or SecureX. These are important topics regarding Cisco's overall security strategy, and regardless of whether it's on the test or not, you should have a basic understanding. There's a mix of DevNet Learning Labs and YouTube videos to get you up to speed. Week 8 is where we get into exam mode. We want to be laser focused on the most relevant content, peeling away all of the contextual stuff and focusing on the core. First, watch the general network automation course to refresh those skills. Then, watch the remaining courses on various security automation topics in the correct sequence. I've also peppered in some postman collection self-studying. During this series, I created eight different free Postman collections, which I think are going to be useful to understand how the APIs work. You can download them from my website using the links in the plan. 
After you get through all the training, I suggest you read the short blog I wrote about my personal experience. I recently passed the exam and I blogged about it, so I suggest investing a few minutes to get my personal perspective. There are two more quick points I want to raise before we wrap up. There are obviously many other resources in addition to what I've shown in this chart. I always encourage you to explore other things that are out there that might be helpful for you in your journey. Second, this plan is going to be updated regularly as I find new resources or as old resources get deprecated, etc. You'll want to check back at my website every couple weeks if you're actively studying to make sure that you have the latest plan. Thanks everyone for your time today. Please reach out with any questions and good luck in your studies.